So we brought in an expert for this next session on the open space. And so I'm going to bring down Chief Impact Officer for Civic Makers, Judy Brown. Thank you, Adam. Hello, everybody. As Adam said, my name is Judy Brown. I'm the co-founder and chief impact officer of Civic Makers. We have had the honor and the pleasure of doing some work with some of you in the room here. Most of what we do is applying human-centered design to disciplines like change management, community engagement, and strategic planning with public sector folks like like yourselves. So we have reached the portion of the agenda today where, as Adam says, uh, there was not an agenda. This was the co-created collaborative portion that the AGL Association was kind enough to invite us to help facilitate. Uh, and so this is where we are going to get into breakout sessions to talk about some of the topics that you all found interesting or wanted to dig into more today. This is really where you get to share your voice around what you see as the future of digital services throughout the state of California. Uh, open space is about being where you want to be when you want to be there. So we're going to work with our facilitators to section off this room according to the topics. If you spend some time with the topic and you want to move to another topic, you're free to do that. Uh, we want you to share your ideas. We're going to have a note taker in the group, and we want to capture all of your ideas and dreams and aspirations uh, for the future. <laughs> and um, we're going to do a report out at the end. So timing-wise, we're going to give you about 30 minutes to discuss each topic. And then we're going to have a second round. So 10 topics emerged across our ideation board. Thank you for sharing your ideas and then voting on the ideas that you really wanted to dig into. Um, and it'll be about 35 minutes for each, each set of topics. So what I'm going to do now is invite my facilitators to come up and read the topics that have been chosen. And then we're going to need your help a little bit to make this space collaborative. We have some ideas for how we might section off the space, but you're welcome to use your bodies to vote for how you want to engage with the topics. OK? Sound good? All right. Good. Brian. How might we define Agile? How might we define Agile? Thank you, Brian. And we will have your section right over here. How might we build a more skilled workforce? How might we build a more skilled workforce? Thank you, Elizabeth. We'll have your section right over here. How might we become more open in respect to culture, process, and technology? How might we become more open in respect to culture, process, and technology? Bill, thank you. Uh, we'll have your topic right over here. Uh, um, you can do one over. Yeah, there you go. D? Okay. Um, this is how might we align procurement officers with program managers? Everyone hear that? Program, procurement, let's get them aligned. Uh, D, we'll have you in that back corner. How might we enhance interorganizational communication and break silos? All right, great topic, Sachin. You will be in that other back corner over there. So as a reminder, we have a section over here with Brian that is, again. How might we define Agile? How might we define Agile? We have a section over here with Elizabeth and Isabella. How might we build a more skilled workforce? Thank you, thank you. And then Bill, we have. How might we become more open in culture, process, and technology? And our back corner with D is about aligning procurement and program. program. Great. And then Sachin is? Interorganizational communication and break silos. OK, those are all the topic areas. We have 35 minutes. Go to the topic that most excites you. Share your ideas. We're going to capture those ideas, and then we're going to report back. Also, shout out to my business partner, Lawrence, over here 
for helping to create order out of what could have been very chaotic. Thank you, Lawrence. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> it works. Whoop, whoop. We, we have, we have uh, moved on to the one conversation at a time. The conversation is the person with the microphone currently. Whoop, whoop. Uh, I would love for you to pick the person within your group who is going to do the report out. The report out will happen after this next session. Okay, so I know you had a note taker, you had a facilitator. So you're gonna pick someone who's going to come up here after the next session and tell us what you learned. Okay? Now I need my other facilitators to come up. Oh, Lawrence brought an actual bell. Thank you, Lawrence. <laughs> oh, someone likes the whoop whoop. She likes the whoop whoop. We're trying to design for all here. Uh, I also wanted to mention that we heard a lot about culture and this is us practicing what a culture of innovation might look like by bringing as many ideas in as we can. Yes, Jessica, I'm talking to you. Come on. Uh, and I need Tamara up here, and I need Lawrence, and I need Shaney, and I need Brendan. Hi, Brendan. Okay, so stay where you are for now. I'm going to have our facilitators name off the topics again. Tam, you... You got yours. Okay. Uh, Shaney. Oh, this is yours. Okay. Uh huh. Um, and here we go. Brendan, go ahead and name yours. How might we cultivate a culture of and capacity for innovation? Ooh, great. Uh, Brendan, we're going to have you right here. Sure. How might we cultivate a culture of innovation? Right? and capacity for, a culture and capacity for innovation that's gonna be right down here. Tamara? Okay. How might we rethink leadership so that we can effectively engage the creative capacity of the entire organization? How might we rethink leadership so we can engage the creative capacity of the entire organization? I may have memorized that because maybe I contributed to that. Thank you, Tamara. We're gonna put you right here. Shaney. How might we differentiate agile product development and agile project management? Say it again, just so everybody hears it. How might we differentiate between agile product development and agile project management? Might be something I'm interested in. The man who needs no introductions today, Shaney. We're gonna put you over in that section where they were talking about defining agile. So that, it's almost like we planned this. Jessica. How might we create a safe space for learning organizations? Beautiful, thank you. Uh, Jessica, we'll put you in that corner. And last but not least, the man himself, Mr. Lawrence Gradeska, <laughs> whatever that means. I'm just a guy. Um, so uh, my topic, or our topic, is how might we, those of us in this room and in this community, tell our story? How might we take what happened here today and tell it uh, from on high? And um, just a really quick note that for those of you that were taking notes during this session, thank you. Uh, and if you go to bit.ly slash AGL Summit Notes, that's B-I-T dot L-Y slash AGL Summit Notes, um, there is a collaborative Google Doc where you can dump your notes. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Lawrence. So we're going to spend another 35 minutes in these groups. Does everybody, do you need a reminder of where everyone is or we're good? Yes, reminder. yes? reminder. Okay, so over here we have Brendan's group, which is about creating a culture and capacity for innovation. Uh, we have Tam's group, which is about uh, rethinking leadership to engage the creative capacity of an entire organization. Are you impressed that I remember that? This is Shaney's Agile project management versus product development. What's the difference, right? That's what we're doing. Uh, and then over here, we have Lawrence telling the story. How might we tell our story? And then we have Jessica over here facilitating how might we become a learning organization. 
right? So 35 minutes, share your great, beautiful, brilliant ideas together, and then we're going to come back and report out so that we can all learn from each other. And go. Okay, we've come to the end of our second session of Open Space. Give yourselves a round of applause. You all did great. <laughs> uh, so now, I would love for you to pick your report out person. So there's going to be someone who comes up here and tells us what, what you learned, what you talked about, what were the key takeaways. Uh, we have note takers. We're going to synthesize some of this information and report back. This is what we do. We're creating feedback loops. We're asking you for your input, and we're going to report it back. Right, Lawrence? <laughs> Are you going to be the report back person for your topics? No. no. All right. Very good. OK, and then our other session leaders, report back people, come on down. Not everyone all at once. That's a little overwhelming for me when you all run at me at the same time. Julian, are you one of our report back people? All right. Yes. It's time for someone else to be on the stage. Dee, are you one of our report back people? All right, come on up here. Okay, so uh, our group will go ahead and go first. Um, our topic was how might we become more open in culture, process, and tech? Whoop, whoop. We're back at one conversation. The, per the person with the microphone, sorry, Julie. You were gonna do it? Can you, can you do it? Let's hear it. No, he doesn't want to do that. All right, so uh, again, we had uh, the topic of how might we become more open in culture, process, and tech. Um, our group really sort of coalesced around the idea of um, this change in attitude needing to come from uh, leadership, to come right from the top. Um, basically, basically, we need to remove obstacles. We need to remove the fear of rejection, of the hard stops, of you know, shooting down ideas. We want a, an open culture of, yes, every idea is okay. Every idea counts. Uh, there are no bad ideas. There are no stupid ideas. Offer them up. Um, but our group, again, really sort of emphasized that that needs to come from the leadership and it needs to be pushed by the leadership because there can be an initial sort of pushback on it, or pushback's the wrong word, an initial sort of unwillingness to believe among uh, personnel that that's, that's really the case. You're really, you're really telling us that we can, we can offer up our own ideas, we can really run the show, um, in a sense. And leadership really needs to be there to reinforce that idea, to confirm that, yeah, this is a safe space. This is, uh, this is an open environment. Hi. Our team was um, how might procurement and program managers work more closely together? I might be paraphrasing that a bit, so I'm sorry. Um, but some of the themes that were discussed was um, silos. So you're the procurement team, I'm the program manager team, we have specific roles, we can't play different roles, and so some of the thoughts were more cross-functional trainings. Uh, can procurement folks learn more about business owners? Can program managers have procurement training? Uh, can we also increase transparency? There was a lot of folks in our team that were in the state department, and they're like, um, some of the themes were around, you know, I did this because I know so-and-so, and so I copied their process, and sort of the learning was there's a lot of wheels being created at the state level, at the city level, at the federal level. How do we increase the transparency so we can do more work and not spend that time sort of learning the same lessons, going through the same failures? Um, how do we learn from each other? And then um, just a you know, a variety of conversations around Agile and how do we really implement that and what does that mean for procurement today, the legacy of procurement. Um, but a lot of the themes are around trust and, you know, having a more teams-based approach versus singularity and just your specialization. 
Um, so that was sort of our summary. Hi, I'm Regan. Um, our uh, topic was how might we tell our story? Um, and it, we talked about looking at the challenges and opportunity of storytelling. Um, we shared uh, some of the, uh, uh, the narratives that we were personally being challenged with uh, at our own organizations. Uh, but we decided that one of the key points of um, telling the story is having a plan or a strategy, having a correct order of the why, the what, the how, um, and ultimately putting the narrative into the hands of the beneficiaries. So, for example, if we're going into a community and we're trying to address some of the, the issues that they're having, that we prioritize some of the time that we're putting into uh, project uh, development into actually training people to help us tell their story. So that gives us a, a, a better chance of maybe stepping back, um, building down some of the silos that we have uh, when we're developing projects, and really getting a fresh, fresh, uh, fresh perspective and uh, learning how we might be able to also help an organization or a group of people change the narrative that they're currently being challenged with. Hi, my name's Dustin. Uh, our group was tasked with looking at how might we create a safe space for learning organizations. And part of the conversation that we had was, what does that mean? What is a learning organization? And so we talked about a couple of different things. Well, one specifically is, you know, is a learning organization an external organization that provides learning for a group? Well, that is certainly one aspect of it. The other was, okay, in, in, internally, you know, how do you create a safe space to become a learning organization? And so that was another part of the conversation. And then ideally, you know, we, we were looking at, you know, ways in which that created that safe space and ways that become uh, acceptable for, uh, for that learning to occur. Mm -hmm. And in that space, the, the conversation was, you know, when there are silos, uh, mm -hmm. when there are walls and, and barriers and actually almost penalties for learning, uh, if you are unwilling to take an opportunity to stretch beyond your skill set or you're unwilling to step beyond your role mm -hmm. as defined by your job description, then you aren't really able to learn because there's that penalty for that learning because right now a lot of organizations don't reward that. They don't make it easy for you to do that. Uh, as a matter of fact, in, in one of the discussion points we were talking about how uh, learning on an external thing like going to conferences is viewed as a perk rather than something that you should be doing and so that maybe higher level people get to go to the perk because they're, they're performing at a different space versus someone who actually is tasked with that opportunity or that job doesn't get to do that because it's viewed as a perk. And so that was part of the conversation. And really what we kind of circled around was the fact that uh, it really needs to be an opportunity for learn. So similar to what has been touched on a lot of the, in, the, in today is that looking at the space and rewarding early failures you know, exposing, talking about that, making sure that everybody understands. And so there's knowledge sharing among the group. That's where learning comes from. And so that was kind of the, the space we felt is that if you could create those organizational spaces where it's safe to share failures, even if they're, they're not, you know, yours personally, or if you, someone discovers it, kind of celebrating, oh, wow, you guys we found this problem and we'll be able to solve it now, and celebrating that rather than stigmatizing it, it seemed like that was probably one of the better ways to create that safe space. Hi everyone, my name is Savan. Um, I was with the group that was talking about how do we build a skilled workforce. So we talked about in two different ways. One, getting people in the door, hiring, um, and then upskilling or training your existing workforce. Some of the things we talked about with getting people in the door, um, some ideas that I heard were um, Thinking about RFPs where you let the, t the vendors or team actually bring in their own staff, so thinking about different ways of um, bringing in groups of people that work together. We also talked about um, something that John had said earlier um, in um, the panel up here about the average tenure being about two years. So when you bring somebody in the door expecting that they might not last very long and start thinking about building value and kind of succession planning as soon as possible. Um, we also talked about how you market jobs um, and thinking about um, how you can sell them, how you can sell some of the challenges of working in government and reframing it as um, ways to make an impact or other things that might be more attractive to people. 
Um, as far as building skills um, with your existing staff, one idea that got a lot of um, excitement was rotational assignments as a way to um, get something new and build skills and kind of learn from people in other parts um, of the organization and especially at some of the larger state organizations. There might be a lot of opportunity for that and learn from other folks. Um, we talked about how um, some, um, there might be fears of job security um, that might make it hard for um, existing people to be afraid to learn or to integrate new um, staff members on. If you have somebody coming on that has a lot of skill in one area, they might actually encounter some pushback from existing staff and talked about ways that leadership can um, create opportunities for people to work with each other and learn from each other and kind of emphasize that existing folks have knowledge and respect the things that they already know about how organizations work um, and make it safer and, and build trust that just because some other new people are coming on, that doesn't mean the existing staff are no longer valuable. Um, and then finally, we talked a little bit about training and we, you know, a lot of us had opportunities to go to trainings or things like this and how do you actually make that meaningful? So we talked about um, ways to encourage um, teams to actually implement things or go and look for one thing that you can bring back to your organization the next week and directly implement, um, taking teams as a group together to training so that they can work on things together and have another group of people to talk about and implement things with together. Um, and that it's really important that trainings only happen when um, whatever is being trained is something that is actually um, able to be implemented and not something that, okay, maybe this might be helpful five years down the line. By the time that comes around, you'll have forgotten it so the training's not very worthwhile. Thanks. Hi, I'm Nicole, and my group was talking about uh, what does Agile mean? How do we define it? Um, and part of what came out of that was there's two kind of key different understandings of the word Agile. One is very much related to the development process, but it's not just about coding. It's about the entire process. So when we talk about, the, we hear about the Agile mindset, that's what we mean. We mean how Agile is approached and integrated into every step from early strategic, strategic planning all the way through research, design, testing, coding, more testing, more coding, more testing, and release. Uh, so uh, the, we, we talked about like big A Agile, the mindset, really being about the principles and values, uh, not about just the process. Um, we know that a lot of organizations are excited about the idea of Agile. They want to implement it right away. They see it as a development process, and a lot gets missed out mainly strategy research and uh, design. So uh, the mindset of being flexible uh, to new discoveries along the process, the things that come out of design and research, it really requires product management and leadership adapting to that change. There's a lot of pressure on development teams to meet what they've committed to by the end of the sprint or promise or whatever the current you know, uh, uh, term is. Um, so there is a often an organizational resistance to what actually we learn from Agile or what we would be learning. Um, so uh, uh, let's see, uh, we want to make sure that we're educating more about the value and meaning of Agile against, against what points mean and um, how many stories we're going to address within a sprint. Um, uh, we need to be integrated with design, uh, that Agile is all about from the development perspective, a quick learning. And that, that really should be true throughout the whole process. Quick learning in strategic conversations, quick learning from uh, lean research, quick learning and, implement and, and design and lean design. Um, there, Agile can be, can include the whole team and it often doesn't. Um, we also wanted to, we also talked about the, um, where are we? Uh, oh, just continuous improvement. Again, something that is often only applied to development, but really should be something we consider all along. Um, leadership needs to be flexible with what they consider valuable and uh, what they consider a whole product. We need a vision for that project. That will also change with the research that we do and the testing we do in the product space. And we need to... Uh, 
uh, talk about what, what isn't Agile. You know, sometimes we don't discuss when we're doing Agile wrong what exactly we're, we're not doing correctly. Uh, and those things can be Agile Fall, which is a maybe started out as an Agile project, but somehow turns into Waterfall towards the end of it. Um, we have uh, going through the motions of ceremonies and being really stressed out about making sure we're meeting those and losing the sense of value and sometimes even product vision as we go along. Uh, we talk about communication gaps. One of the things that Agile in the development process demands of developers is a lot more social interactivity than some folks are actually um, uh, comfortable with. Uh, and uh, let's see, what's the other one? Um, basically, it's not Agile unless it's truly driven by user needs. It's not driven by user needs unless you are doing your research initially, testing your hypotheses, adjusting that, and then testing after launch. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm the last one between you and whatever comes after me. Uh, so. <laughs> oh, OK, hey. Okay. All right, all right. So our question was, how might we enhance or inter-organizational communication and break down silos? So the common theme that we have here is communication, collaboration, and coordination. And we need not be afraid of either one of them because those are all the things that help break down those silos. And uh, in our group, it was uh, the common themes were human-centric design, focus on the people, collaboration, mission discovery. Everybody collaborates around a mission, and everybody needs to understand and know what that mission is. And that helps to break down the silo, because if you know what your mission is, what the vision is, and the value of the mission, everybody kind of gloms together to, to go after that mission. So I am going to end by, um, when I was at the Department of Agriculture, I was known as the singing, dancing deputy. So um, since this is being recorded, I can't play the song, but I'll do my best to actually try to sing it. So uh, <laughs> if there's something strange in your neighborhood, who are you going to call? Silo busters. <laughs> if there's something weird and it don't look good, who are you going to call? Silo busters. <laughs> no ghost. <laughs> I'm not afraid of communication. <laughs> Silo busters. So uh, I'm not going to sing and dance, so <laughs> sorry. As I know, that's not how you create a culture and cultivate a culture of uh, innovation. So that was our topic. And fundamentally, it came from two levels. Uh, it really needs to be from top down. So we need to have the leadership that will provide the air clever to say, Risk and ideation will be rewarded and not punished. Um, and that will inspire people from the bottom up. So where they will be, in turn, inspired to take risks and do the work. Uh, we also need to do the storytelling to uh, celebrate the in innovation work that we do. So that way, people will hear about the work that's done. And that will, in turn, build the trust that we've heard about so much today. Uh, and then celebrating, uh, as, as well as that, beyond storytelling. It's just when we do the hard work and it's simple at the end, we need to celebrate all the work behind the scenes that has happened there. This thing on? Sorry, I have to do that. <clears throat> Hi, I'm David. Um, so the question that we uh, were discussing was, how can we rethink leadership to effectively engage the creative capacity of the entire organization? So we, we had a pretty good discussion. And um, I want to touch on a couple of the themes that, that really came up 
Um, and, and they came down to really two big areas, of course, um, as they often do, culture and um, some of the tools and methods. So on the culture side, um, some of the things that we talked about was servant leadership as, as a way of leaders um, embracing the strengths of their subordinates and, and encouraging them to be successful, allowing them to be successful. Um, also, uh, trust, because if you're the manager uh, of, of a group of people, um, you need to have some trust in them that they'll, you know, if you give them or you empower them, that they're not going to go off in some weird direction. So <clears throat> the trust was a big theme today. I, I've, I've seen it a lot. Um, and confidence. So the trust leads to confidence over time. Um, but one thing that, that uh, I think went through the thread, the thread that went through all of it was psychological safety. So for example, for tools and methods, having an anonymous way of submitting your idea on an idea board um, was a great way to reduce hierarchy and allow for ideas to just be shared broadly without having to be assigned to you know, somebody who has a good or a bad reputation or position within the organization. So, so there certainly are some um, process and method enablers, but uh, really culture and, and the practices that, are, you know, that the organization that you're in um, supports are, are really gonna be the enablers for, uh, for enabling creativity across the organization. And last but not least. <laughs> so the last group talked about the difference between product and project management. And so we first talked about what is that difference and decided on that um, product management is about where we are trying to go and why. So what problem are we trying to solve and are we building the right thing to solve that problem? Versus project management is are we going to get there on time? Um, so it's more of the traditional time, cost, and scope of the project. And then our conversation uh, moved towards what are the challenges that we've seen um, kind of coordinating between those two roles or, or if both roles are necessary. Um, and so we discussed that in public sector, the idea of a product manager is somewhat new. Um, our offices typically have PMOs or, or project management offices, um, but the idea of project or product managers is new and oftentimes there's a proxy um, that we don't actually have trained product managers and that there's a conflict and a power dynamic that happens between the two. There's not well-defined uh, roles, um, and they will report different stories, which creates conflict on the project. Um, and that oftentimes, the issue with project management is it bogs down the process in documentation and, and process rather than really focusing on are we moving in the right direction and so that causes conflict. But there was um, some opinion that sometimes documentation is necessary and helpful and helps in later projects um, and is necessary to meet compliance uh, and audits. And that ultimately there's a need for both, but that requires a culture shift at the state and in our public entities um, to really understand the difference between the two and, and better facilitate collaboration and communication between the two roles. So thank you. Thank you, Isabella. Thank you everyone for participating in the open space portion. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. Hey, thank you to the facilitators, the note takers, and the people who were brave enough to come up on the microphone. Joyce, I'm looking at you. We love that song. Um, just a reminder to note takers, please submit your notes to bit.ly. AGL Summit Notes. AGL Summit Notes so that we can compile all of those great ideas that you just shared. Um, and again, I wanna thank 
thank AGL Association for uh, handing over a portion of this amazing event to this open space. Uh, and with that, I would like to invite the executive director, Aaron Pava, to come up and uh, bring us all home. Thank you, Judy. Wow. Wow. I honestly thought, Judy and Lawrence, when we were like, we're going to have 10 or 15 people come up on the stage and report back that are participatory in the conference. I thought, I don't know if conference attendees are really going to want to come up on stage. And wow. Wow, thank you for being here and participating in those quality conversations and sharing your learnings. And thank you both for leading this part of the conversation. Um, I want to do a round of thank yous uh, for all the people that helped put this event together, all the speakers and panelists that provided the amazing quality conversations. They all did it out of their goodness of their hearts and wanting to contribute to you all. And I want to really thank them for coming, some of them flying here from you know, long distances. Um, and I want to thank you for your attention. I mean, one of the biggest uh, currencies we have right now is our quality of attention. And to come to a tech-oriented conference and not be on your phones, and be present and not be doing work and really being engaged in the conversation is really one of the biggest gifts. And I am just so impressed and so grateful for how you all showed up at this event um, today. So thank you for that. Again, I want to thank the sponsors who made this possible, uh, Civic Makers, Civic Actions, CGI, Red Hat, Agile 6, and Enterprise Networking Solutions. Thank you so much. Um, behind the scenes, there's been a number of people working on this, but no people more than uh, Melinda Burgess, who's been doing all the AGL work for many years and continues to do background work. And then, of course, the conference organizer, our uh, VP of uh, Government uh, Relations, Bill Maley, who really brought together all the, all the logistics and made all this possible. And so thank you, Bill. Um, and lastly, I just want to say, the, the vision of AGL is really to be this member-based organization <clears throat> that we don't represent the companies that we work for or the agencies that we work for but we really are a representative of the professionals that are engaged in these conversations. To give us a collective voice and to advocate on behalf of what we see is going to provide success in the public sector. So that means people that are working on government projects and it means people that are in the vendor community. And this is an experiment for us. We have a hypothesis that there's a need for this and that people will want to participate in something like this. So if this is of interest to you and you believe in this mission and you want to see more summits and you want us to do this work uh, in other places, I highly encourage you to find out more about the AGL Association. We have a table in back. We'll also follow up with some emails so you could learn more about us. Um, we're continuing to provide webinars and free trainings and we have resources online, and I'm sure you've seen our website and the kind of work that we do, a really quality members-only newsletter. And again, I just want to invite you into that conversation. And this isn't us pushing an agenda, us pushing something that we think. This is really about enabling your voice, right? And so this is made up of committees, made up of you. What do you want to see? Do you want to meet with other public sector folks dealing with the same kind of conversations that you're inside of? Do you want to join committees that are around events? Um, do you want to participate in doing webinars? Whatever it is, doing educational services, anything like that. Again, the invitation is open. We're receptive. We really want to be your advocates or be a home for you to um, advocate on behalf of all of us. So 
This is just a start. We hope it was a really good start. I personally feel it was an extraordinary one, and I want to celebrate with you all. And so we have a little bit of time left, if you'd like, to, to visit with the, the folks that helped uh, underwrite this in, in, the, in the MP room. And, and, and there's probably some cookies and, and, uh, and water, and we could enjoy that. And then we're going to migrate over um, to everyone's favorite thing, which is tacos, free tacos. No, um, we're going to meet over at Vallejo's and continue the conversation and con continue to connect with each other. And I really hope you'll join us over there and, and keep that going on. And again, thank you all for being here. Thank you for participating. And thank you for all making this happen. Thank you.